So now some of the dust has started to settle around the whole Nintendo suing Paw World out of the blue nine months after the release of the game thing. I wanted to do a follow up video to respond to some of the things that have been discussed since and some of the comments from my last video. Now, there are a lot of things about this entire situation that strike me as really, really murky and unclear. Now, most everybody knows that speculation about the whole will Nintendo sue Pal World thing began with people online comparing the designs of Pal World's characters and Nintendo's Pokemon. This was then dropped when Nintendo came out and said they saw no copyright infringement. Let's be clear what exactly that means. That means that Nintendo looked at the design of each individual Pal and found none of them were identical to any particular Pokemon, Nintendo would then file some form of copyright claim against them, which they would have to resolve by removing their use of that design and possibly paying Nintendo for damages. However, in this case, about the only bit of information that's actually confirmed is that Nintendo are suing them over multiple patent infringements. That is, there are multiple aspects of the game that Nintendo claims to have patented. Now, this has led internet denizens to speculate that it must be, quote unquote, something directly about the game mechanics. At the moment, though, I've got to be honest, I think this is a lot of internet lawyering. Yes, we have had controversies in the past with things like the Nemesis system from the Shadow of Mordor games being copyrighted. We've seen studios struggle to license things like the Dungeons and Dragons engine to make computer games using it. So there are some people that are trying to play this situation off as just another incident of one game developer who thinks some game design aspect of their game that they rightfully own due to its uniqueness, etc, etc. Not a patent lawyer, not going to play internet lawyer on my channel. That some aspect of that has been infringed upon by the guys over at Pocket Pair. And this debate is interesting to have when we think about the whole issue of intellectual property and creativity in game design. But I think that more abstract debate kind of gets away from the particulars of this situation because it's Nintendo we're talking about. And all of the internet lawyering also kind of guises and dresses up the reality behind how a lot of these suits actually work at the corporate level because I may not know the law, but I know how human beings work in a lot of these situations. We know without a doubt for a fact that Nintendo are the most litigious company in gaming. Nintendo have financially ruined people from things like selling old consoles to hosting old ROMs that you can't get to DMCA striking fan art. To believe that because the lawsuit is about patents that it's not about the game's stylistic similarities to Pokemon is to absolutely miss the point about how law works. The sad reality is that legal means are almost always instrumental in character. You just want to achieve the end, you don't care about how. It doesn't matter whether Al Capone is in prison for being a mobster or for tax evasion. What matters is that he's behind bars. What clearly matters to Nintendo is not whether Paul World gets shut down for patented gameplay elements or for similarities to Pokemon characters. What matters is that Nintendo IPs are protected and that everyone, especially, especially in Japan, quiver in their boots at the very thought of potentially using, damaging, or harming Nintendo intellectual property in any respect. Nintendo are clear about that in this lawsuit and they've been clear about that in almost every lawsuit they've made over the past 15 to 20 years. And it's worth it to keep in mind that as of yesterday, even the developers of Pal World themselves, Pocket Pair, say they do not as of yet know over what explicit designs they are being sued over. And it's also possible that we, the general public, will just never know if this ends up being settled behind closed doors. I'm kind of hoping there's a leak, but as of the recording of this video, no such luck. But I'm going to say something that I haven't heard a lot of other people say in the commentary space about this whole thing. I don't believe Nintendo's rationale. I do not believe they are worried about Pal World infringing upon their patents. I think they are both angered by the game's success and their recent negative reviews for the Pokemon franchise, as well as angered that an indie upstart. Remember, the Japanese market is not famous for PC gaming, nor is it famous for small indie developers. The idea that a small Japanese indie developer would make a game that has obvious similarities, not legally, to the average consumer to Pokemon, thus that journalists would write articles about it. In a culture like Japan, that is going to come across as deeply offensive and outside the rules of how things are normally done. In fact, one of the things that I've liked about Pocket Pair is that quirky spirit of innovation. 
Actually, short story time here with Old Man Banjo, speaking of quirky Japanese spirit of innovation. When I used to work at the university, one of my colleagues was actually from the University of Chiba in Japan. He was this really, really nonchalant, tall dude, like six foot three, long hair. And because he had used to have been my older classman, I always really annoyed him by calling him senpai. And whenever I would do something like that, he would calmly pause and look at me and go, I do not like you know so much about the Japanese culture. He would say that in a deadpan tone and, and then ignore me. One day, we're with all the other teachers and we're discussing what we did before we became teachers and all the various different jobs. I was talking about the time I worked as a baker, another person was talking about the time they worked in an office. And then finally, it's his turn to explain what he did before he became a teacher. And he pauses and completely nonchalantly says, oh, was Yakuza. Now, the people that knew what that was in the group laughed and the people that didn't just kind of shrugged it off and continued talking. Then about a minute later, I look down at his hands that are on the table and I notice that the entire end of his pinky finger is missing. And as I raise my gaze to meet his from looking at the table, he says to me, I wish you didn't know so much about Japanese culture. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called getting owned. I, I could really tell that he, he was very much enjoying my response. Anyways, sorry, that went on longer than I intended. Story time over. The reality is that Nintendo will crush everyone in their path in an immoral spree to enforce their copyright law as a billion dollar company over the lives of individuals or just common decency. The case is yet to be made as to whether somehow Nintendo might have a point about Power World infringing on their patents. My deep suspicion is that almost no one is going to agree other than the hardcore Nintendo apologists. My speculation, and this is speculation, I'm, I'm really tired of people playing internet lawyer. My speculation is it's a series of patents that when you stick them all together, looks like a game like Pokemon, but without referencing any specific character designs or aesthetic, just focusing on things like Pokeballs, things like battle pets, stuff like that. But again, it's just my speculation on the internet. Same as yours in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Same as even the big YouTubers, you know? It's all internet speculation at this point. And because it's all speculation, I think it's even more important to focus on what we do know. And what we do know is what Nintendo is doing is wrong. I think one of the things you can lose in too many videos on the internet and too much speculation is a certain level of moral clarity on issues like this. And this is just wrong. We, we know it's wrong. We know Nintendo used the legal system in ways that a legal system just shouldn't be used. As of recording this video, Pocket Pair have said that they're going to fight the lawsuit with everything they have, which is a remarkable amount of bluster from a small indie dev. But we also need to keep in mind that the 15 million in revenue, it's probably higher now from that last report, but the 15 million in revenue that Pocket Pair have earned from the game so far is probably substantially less than Nintendo's overall legal budget. I would think Nintendo's overall legal budget is probably in the hundreds of millions. I don't think it is speculation to say that the odds of them surviving a lawsuit with Nintendo and coming out on the other end okay are very high. In fact, I think the only thing that might cause Nintendo to relent a little bit would be a huge public backlash, which they're not going to get. If you look at the comments from my last video, you can see there are enough pro Nintendo people in the world that Nintendo fans alone could support Nintendo, even if it did some of the worst things in human history, they would still have a fan base. Which is really not a great note to end this video on, but uh, I think that's where we are with the story so far. I'll make another video if we get any updates, and if you want to see that, like and subscribe. I'm a small channel. It probably doesn't do much for the algorithm these days, but I enjoy numbers going up like I think all gamers do. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, peace. Oh, and yeah, don't buy anything from Nintendo.